Medical device businesses are significantly different in business model than the pharmaceutical business. And I think what we have probably struggled with is the agility and the speed that we need to operate with, with cycles that are more three-year, four-year, five-year development cycles versus a drug development cycle, which is considerably longer, bigger bets. So we feel like we can get behind innovation again the way we came up through this business you know, years ago, specialty focus on ophthalmology, developing the best stuff we can for helping people see better. And just to dig into that a little bit more, financial performance under Novartis over the last couple of years had been disappointing, although the results have improved in recent quarters. Where's the future growth going to come from? Well, first of all, we have strong underlying trends. So we start with, you know, we're swimming with the current, right? We've got um, a really good uh, aging population that helps our cataract and our surgical business. We've got a movement from monthly contact lenses into daily contact lenses, which are healthier for your eyes. And I think to a large degree, that's driving, you know, kind of the fundamental business. But beyond that, we've got new products like Panoptics is a new cataract intraocular lens that you put in after cataract surgery. So if you live long enough, you're going to get a cataract. We could fix that, but we can now fix it such that you can see distance and also your computer screen and then also kind of your near vision for reading. So there's a lot of new technology we think we can bring in this space that gives us growth kind of at or above market. Uh, how, how, you know, I have a theory going right now. And by the way, I do use those daily contacts and I, I would be blind without them. Um, but I have a theory going right now that as the world becomes more and more digital, as we get more and more entrenched with our computers and our smartphones, that I say just getting poorer and poorer. I would imagine you've quantified that and you see an opportunity there in terms of care. Well, Morgan, you're right on. I mean, actually, one of the really kind of important uh, things that the uh, World Health Organization has put out recently is this epidemic in myopia that's really occurring all over the world, but all, actually, you know, significantly in Asia right now. There's, there's, some, there's gonna be five billion myopes, you know, so in other words, nearsighted folks uh, by 2050. And that's a lot due to these handhelds, right? Kids aren't getting outside, they're not playing, they're not looking and exercising their eyes at distance. And so they're staying in and they're looking in here so you don't, you know, that eye doesn't elongate. That's a big problem. So treating that is a big issue. Thinking about how to prevent it is a big opportunity. But a lot of correction is gonna, gonna happen over the next, uh, you know, 10, 20 years. Has, has the LASIK phenomenon been a drag or a tailwind? Recently, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a tailwind. I think it, we've seen that market grow. It, it came down quite substantially from kind of the just pre-recession time. It came down quite a little bit in procedures in the U.S. But recently, I think last couple of years, been double-digit growth and, you know, small part of our business, but an important one. And I think a real opportunity for correcting myopia. So for nearsighted folks, real opportunity. I can remember when this company was a part of Nestle. I can remember when, obviously, Novartis purchased it. What, you know, aside from, obviously, the timing of your business, as you discussed, what else do you benefit from, from being an independent company for the first time in a very long time? Yeah, yeah. Look, capital deployment's a big deal, and I think when we were part of the group, um, the group had its own needs. And I think if you think about a, the, a $7 billion device company which, with $7 billion in revenue inside of a $50 billion revenue pharma company, the, the choices made were really about the pharmaceutical business. And that makes sense. It, would, it made sense for the group. Did not, it, it kept us from doing some things we would have done otherwise. And for example, we, well, vision care you know, is a very capital intensive business. For us to really been aggressive in that area, we haven't innovated a product in a toric version. If you have astigmatism and you have a little wavy eye, like a shape like a football, you know, we, we would have gotten you a toric lens for our best lens years ago. But we didn't put the capital in to build the infrastructure to manufacture that lens until recently. So we're just coming into that opportunity now. Going forward, we, we do that on our own. We make that decision sooner. And I think importantly, gets it to patients faster. Was there a sense that you had to sort of fight for scraps that were ex pharma? Well, I wouldn't say that, but that, <laughs> but but it feels like that a little yeah. bit every now and again. Yeah. You know, it's a it, it was it, look. They've got a great business. They've done a terrific job with it, um, and they're trying to make billion dollar bets. You know, on big drugs. It's just when you're looking at some of the things we were doing and the scale we were doing them, it just didn't fit strategically. Well, it's a hundred percent spin. I and mean, now you've got your own currency. Is it conceivable there are things out there that you'd like to consolidate in the industry? Well, I don't think that's really our main focus. I think what we're going to start with is, is, is technologies that are applicable to the existing spaces we're in. We, we see and do a lot of deals in that kind of 50 to $300 million range, technology-oriented. We've probably done 20 in the last uh, 18, 24 months. So we'll likely stay in that area. Um, big M&A for us isn't really the plan. Act one of new Alcon is to execute well, deliver products efficiently, uh, and then buy what we need to kind of get into some adjacent white spaces.